Sorry, hello, sir. Officer. Officer. Thank you. Deputy, adjutant, deputy adjutant, and the academic mentors and the 
Next is the academic branch. The academic branch is responsible for the conduct of the four-year degree program as well as the postgraduate programs for KDES in Nigerian Defense Academy. It is also responsible for the administration of the academic library. It is headed by the academic provost, who is a civilian professor, who was introduced to you at the foyer. Other principal officers are the academic uh, registrar as well as the academic librarian. This department is responsible for the award of bachelor's degree in some 14 disciplines and also award of postgraduate degrees up to doctorate level. Under this uh, organ, we have the faculties of arts and science, institute sciences, faculty of science, and faculty of engineering. Just to familiarize you with each faculty, these are the departments that can be seen on the screen. First, faculty of arts and social sciences. Next, faculty of science. And the last one, faculty of engineering. Any person in the entry can take advantage of some of these things. We also have centers of excellence, center for defense studies and documentation, center for nuclear science and technology, intellectual property, technology and transfer office, and the last one, and most recent, center for energy and environment. Another organ of the Nigerian Defense Academy is the Rectorate of Military Training. This directorate is responsible for professional military training and exercises. It is the reason why NGA is NGA, military training. It consists of five wings. These wings are the Army Wing, the Naval Wing, the Air Force Wing, the Short Service Wing, and the Training Support Wing, which is also responsible for equitation, drill, and weapon training. <coughs> The last, but by no means the least, is the KDS Brigade, which sees to the character development of the KDS Academy. It consists of five KDS battalions, which are named after places where Nigerian armed forces demonstrated their, their skills in previous wars. These are Abyssinia Battalion, Burma, Dalet, Mogadishu, and Ashanti Battalion. Next is the training activity we have in the Nigerian Defense Academy. There are three broad training programs that we conduct in the Nigerian Defense Academy. These are the five-year uh, regular combatant officers program, the nine-month short service program, and the last one is the nine-month nine direct short service uh, program. A quick look at each of these. First, the regular combatant officers program, which is the core training program of the NGA. It consists of the four-year academic training leading to the award of a bachelor degree. And the last year is a professional military training for each officer cadet. This program trains a bulk of operation officers for the military armed forces. <laughs> Foreign cadets are also admitted based on bilateral relations with Nigeria. Entry requirements as can be seen on the screen. If you are a Nigerian, of course, you must be a non-naturalized Nigerian citizen. Age bracket 18 to 20. Successful candidates who matriculate just as this one you see on the screen. Now, this program used to be an exclusive group reserve of the VKS until 2010 when the policy was reviewed to accommodate female cadets. The first set of female cadets joined in 2011, and as we are now, we are only the third set of female cadets in the academy. Some of them have been seen on the screen. We are aware that Mr. President seeks to enhance gender equality, and I must say, they do better than some of your young As you can see, a female cadet commanding the combined parish. One of them won an award. We also make use of other females, whether as cadets or as personnel. Beautifully dressed, some of them in dangerous spots, including combat or martial arts. Now, on to the short service program. 
The short service program is conducted for Nigeria Army only. It's a nine month exclusive military training designed to produce combat officers for the Army. Entry requirements are decided by Nigerian Army headquarters, but it's all what you can see on the screen. Of course, the person too must be a genesis. The last dynamic is this is the Direction Service Program, which is also a nine month course. It provides professional military training for university graduates recruited into the non combat arm of the Army, Navy, and Air Force. It's a cross gender program. Entry qualifications are determined by the services that are serving the participants. But generally, the participants are usually specialist graduates. No foreigner has so far been uh, admitted onto this program. These are some of our classrooms. For good governance, you see that they compare with any other classroom of five person. We also benefit from Tajabi Educational Transport. I saw their boss, they are here, they can attest to what I'm saying, that NGA has been the forefront of implementing their program. From the Army Minister of Information and CEO Wamebu, who is unavoidably absent, with the Minister's permission, of course, welcome this august team to the Nigerian Defense Academy. I want to, on behalf of the Commandant, heartily congratulate the Honorable Minister for this initiative of informing Nigerians of what is happening around the country. In these times of transformation, that Mr. President is taking hard decisions to redirect the affairs of the nation. We believe this venture of going around to show Nigerians what is happening around the silent and silent achievements in the country is a very laudable one. This, of course, will serve to rekindle hope amongst Nigerians and increase faith in government and leadership. This way, satisfaction will generate increased security and less job for us in any form. We are therefore not surprised that His Excellency Mr. President decided to ask the Honorable Minister of Information to superintend over the armed forces. So we say well done for the job you're doing. We congratulate you for your effort. So here in the academy, we started reading the leaves of Mr. President from day one. <coughs> During his inaugural address, when he declared Nigeria's commitment to international peace and security, in his speech we called, he said, we will continue to play an active role in the United Nations. Unquote. Quickly, as a smart field commander, the commandant decided to introduce peace support operations training into the curriculum of our cadets here. Because as young subalterns, it will be up their lot to go for peace support operations around the world and in Africa. Again, Mr. President, in his 2012 independence address, while reacting to the security challenges in the country, he said, we have taken proactive measures to check the manners on court. In the academy, we introduced counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency programs on the training package of our cadets. This is all a response and a reaction to Mr. President's statements. Coming to the physical development around the academy, we want to inform the Honorable Minister that this site work started here in 1991. Cadets moved from the old site to this place effectively in the year 2007. 
when we moved in here, the only structures on ground were the old cadet lines, which we hope the team will be able to go around and see. The academy headquarters where we are here, academic branch building, the wings, and you know, I'm sure if we decide to show you everything, maybe the, the team will not have time to do so. <laughs> we have carefully designed a drive through during which the Honorable Minister can wait for us to stop and see some things for details. Some of the things we want you to see even through the drive through is the gym which was constructed in 2011. We have a 3,000 seater auditorium that was started last year and is about 70% completed. We have an ultra modern hospital that should house like 200 patients with a presidential wing and executive wing that is also under construction. We have an equitation wing where cadets are taught how to ride horses. We have a school, riding school. If the Honor Minister's time permits, we can pass through. I believe by now we'll have some cadets in training, which the Honor Minister and his team may see. We have a weapons training shed that is under construction as we speak. There is an electronic range that is coming up. We also have a CBN sponsored center of excellence that was commenced early this year, still going on. We have a brand new mechanical engineering complex that we moved in this year. There's a 2,000 seater multipurpose hall, which the Honorable Minister and His Excellency, we had the privilege of hosting them during the last convocation. All these projects came up this year. The Academy purchased 30 Hilux vehicles for driving and maintenance training of cadets, which the team will also see. Our cadet strength is growing. The last course, we had 400 cadets coming up in addition to what we have on ground. So the commander decided to build a utility center, which you will see, where we have our cobblers, shopping complex, and all the other things, laundry and the stuff. Fifth timers are being prepared to become officers. And at that time, we have decided that they should be prepared, their minds should be prepared to act like officers. So the commandants decided that a separate building should be built for them to give them this sense of taking the responsibility. This project came online just last year. It's sitting next to the female cadets quarters. We have a drill shed that was constructed just recently, which took a record three month time to complete. I'm sure the team will also see it. Only last week, three projects came online, a Protestant church, a Catholic church, and a mosque. I'm sure our director of logistics will be very happy to show us the site if we need to see. I'm happy to inform this team that in our stores we have sufficient equipment to run the yard without buying a single pin all courtesy of the support we receive from the ministry and from this government. Of course, while we were seeing the small brief, you saw the multimedia we have in the classes, which is one of the training aids that was introduced just last year. I can go on and on and on counting what has happened to the academy in the last two or three years. All, as like I said, courtesy of this administration. So I want to once again welcome the team and commend the Honorable Minister for this initiative. And we're very happy to take one or two questions before we set out for the fiscal inspection. Thank you very much. The services for people whose competence was recognized in the field and they've been brought in here.
I can mention names when you go around, you see like Ekumula Peswa. We have an engineer, Colonel, retired, uh, Colonel Chukujama and Oladejo. We have quite a few of them here. Yeah. Um, next to Mr. Kura's courses. Yes, um, you know traditionally, um, ND is, is, is abided by this SME science, mathematics and engineering, heavy uh, director from NUC. But however, we take fully on board this issue of nursing democracy. We have civic education under the GNS courses and the issue of um, conduct of soldiers and officers, that is why we did the peace support operations where all these things are uh, contained. I'm going to the third question about percentage of female cadets. We have about 1,300 cadets all around. About 300 of them are female. So we have something in the region of 10 to 50 percent. Now see what is happening. If not because of the effort of the armed forces and of course the information intelligence we receive from civil society, that is the actual Nigerians, I believe what is happening in the Northeast would have crept into the hinterland. So we're doing our best, and uh, you can be sure that in the military, there is no 99% loyalty. It's either you are 100% loyal or you are not loyal. We are loyal to the system. Uh, Dr. Shehu talked about criteria of admission, which was also reinforced. The criteria was clearly set in that place. You have to be 18 to 22 years of age. And far recently, because it's now a degree I wouldn't need an uh, institution, we follow the terms and requirements set out by NUC. You have to go through JAM. So we don't have any contact with any candidates at all. And let me just roll in the last question too, as to whether children of all men pass through this place. We don't admit we are not a secondary school. Every year, DHQ sets up selection board. You go through the JAM, JAM shortlist, you come here, you run 2.3 kilometers, 3.2 kilometers. There's time, if you don't come within that time, they will lock the gates. There's, yes. There's medicals. There's medicals. Everything is done. And just so that, let me just use this opportunity to actually clear the air by even mentioning names. Three years ago, we had a very senior Air Force officer sitting as the chairman of the board, selection board. The son of his boss had met and friend couldn't make it. I'll leave you to go and do the investigation three years ago. You know, so this is how fair and straightforward we are. We don't know names, you cannot do anything. Our examinations are marked by a computer. We don't deal with names. So anybody that is qualified will pass through. Uh, academic, okay, you talked about the PSO package, whether it's going to continue or not. Anything that we are doing now, we can only improve upon it. There is no way. And I also want to use opportunity for all of us to know that we have to adjust to the new normal. There is no question of throwing away city coin or counter and insurgency because these things have come. We will continue to pray if they will go. But we must adjust ourselves to the new normal. The normal where there will be no checkpoints, no security, may not come back again. So anything that we are doing here, we can only improve upon it. Thank you very much. The entire National Good Governance Thought Delegation uh, appreciate the arrangements that have been made to enable us visit the NDA by the management of the Nigerian Defense Academy. We were supposed to come here yesterday. Um, we ran out of time. We sincerely apologize because a lot of people were waiting and we couldn't come. But I uh, will thank you for, again, making the arrangements for us to visit you today. The tour is a very strenuous tour uh, because we have to physically inspect so many projects and facilities. And so most of the time, uh, we are not even to go through more than half of what we are ready to visit. Um, let me on behalf of His Excellency the President, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, <coughs> President Goodluck Jonathan Jisoyen, again appreciate the tremendous progress that has been recorded in the Nigerian Defense Academy. As we have all been put through, this is premier 
military university in West Africa. Um, we are very proud of the standards that have been set here since the Indians left. Uh, senior officers beginning with the age to the present commandant, who have been Nigerian military officers, have continued to set the standards and maintain the standards left by the Indians and also improve on them. Today, this academy receives students from all over Africa uh, who want to train here. Um, in the 60s and 70s and even 80s, it was Sanders, it was Pakistan, it was India. Most of our officers were going abroad. Today, India here has virtually taken the place of those foreign institutions. And it has been very, very well. Let me commend our, our uh, leaders for establishing this institution. Someone asked uh, when the um, no, the Ratao president uh, was making a comment. I can tell you clearly that every government has contributed to the building of this institution since it was set up. You can see a lot of the big structures here they have been also uh, going on since 1991. So every administration has left you know, its footprint here. What the president is doing is to build on the foundations of his predecessors uh, by introducing modern programs in line with changes in the security environment. Uh, because security challenges will not always remain the same. Counterinsurgency has come on board because everybody knows now that the big wars we were anticipating in the past and we are preparing our armed forces to defend the national territory against tiny armies. Today, those wars look very, very unlikely. The real wars of the future are counterinsurgencies within national boundaries or terror groups that will challenge uh, the state across boundaries. This is what is going on now. And all over the world, attention is returning to this cross-boundary criminality that has become the order. And I'm happy that the Nigerian Armed Forces are thinking ahead and already, even before our challenge, they established studies and they have begun training in counterinsurgency, which are the wars of the future. Uh, so I'm not sure that uh, anybody will think of it being withdrawn. Instead, we should get more experience in this uh, because they look like permanent features until our attend peace uh, across the world. Um, let me also particularly emphasize the many programs that have been introduced in the last three years. I say so because um, we're investing a lot in education. It's not just in NDA. Uh, you've seen the number of projects that have been counted here as having been introduced in the last three years of the president's administration, some of them commissioned, some of them ongoing, including training programs, including computerization of classrooms, you know, to introduce uh, e-learning uh, to cadets and other um, uh, entrants into this academy. Uh, so I want to assure members of the armed forces that our investment uh, in this premier institution and in all the other military institutions in the country will continue to increase. Uh, we urge proper management and utilization of resources because challenges are increasing every day. And so we need innovation. Um, a number of the things we used to do in the past, we can do them in new ways that are more cost effective and more efficient at arriving at the same results. That's the challenge of management today. Uh, what are those things we can do within? Uh, that will help us the, um, the Kaduna Refinery and Petrochemical Company. We saw that the management there uh, has been able to restart the major unit of the refinery, which has been locked up for the past 15 years, uh, with local fabricated components designed by their own engineers. As a result of this, the Kaduna Refinery is now refining um, a minimum of 2 million liters of fuel of, of, of petrol per day, PMS, in addition to other uh, products that are also refined. And so all the northern states now, the people in the north, all now have, uh, uh, you know, uh, products, you know, stashed out by pipeline from Kaduna. Now that has brought down importation, and that means that things are getting cheaper and jobs are being created. So in this institution, we will need that. 
the military are known in Nigeria for your standards, for your commitment, for your training doctrine. And uh, that has made the Nigerian Armed Forces stand out among virtually all the other armed forces in this continent. And so that discipline, that commitment, and uh, loyalty, those are the key, you know, um, and innovation. These are the things that will enable us to win in the classroom and in the war field, you know, in the battleground. These are some of the silent points. Let me also again thank Mr. President for introducing the female cadet training at the NDA. It, it never, you, we used to take it for granted that a good soldier must be a man. <laughs> that is what it was uh, until recent times. Uh, today, we are seeing for the first time you can get some of the best combatants uh, from women. And uh, we are beginning to see it in the training here. And again, maybe to remind my colleagues, uh, Flying Officer Blessing Liman uh, became the first female officer, flying, uh, I mean, fighter uh, pilot uh, to be commissioned here uh, at the NDA. And I'm sure many more are already coming on board. So the wars of the future will be fought by both men and women, depending on your capacity and commitment. And as war becomes more of an electronic warfare, uh, physical exertion will still be there, but the brain is going to be the most defining feature of the future wars. And both men and women have equal brains to contribute. The president has already done it, and this is history for Nigerian women. Uh, let me again thank you. We will inspect the projects very quickly. And then... <laughs> So let me, on behalf of the commander, the heads of the staff of the academy, present to you this command to remind you of the This um, season has the making of a house. I'm sure the Honourable Minister in his car. that like every other university we have convocations we have matriculation exercises i told you just a while ago that this year we recruited 400 cadets in the first time this is about the size to continue we're having requests from african countries for more cadets meaning the current school we are using for these things will no longer be enough to carry the capacity of cadets and the glitches we're expecting it is for this reason that this project is going to come up we believed sometime in the first quarter or second quarter of next year, this project should be ready. It is our dream that during this golden jubilee celebration of the Academy, this project should be commissioned. Thank you. Like the site engineer started introducing it, there's a library, there will be auditorium, halls, and some other facilities, there will be a restaurant and other facilities that will come up here, sir. Um, we should have shown the oral minister the model of the uh, project. We, had this, we have the soft copy, we can pass on to you later, sir. This, uh, the site was handed over to the contractors last year, uh, this year, February. Okay, this year, this year. It was handed over to them in February, and I think the duration is supposed to be three years or thereabout. Yes, sir. and the restaurant facility will come up. Center of Excellence for NDA. Now if you look at the layout here, you have lecture theaters, you have library, you have um, hostels, 
250 capacity uh, hostel. Now, if you look at all the facilities spread across here, they will cost the CBN more than 10 billion. That's just in one place. 11, 11 billion naira. That's what this, this N, the CBN is investing here. This is outside the direct budget of the federal government. Now, if you recollect, when we went to the University of Joss, you saw a similar center of excellence by CBN being implemented at the main campus of University of Joss. That one is between 11, 10 and between 9 and 10 billion naira. Now, if you look at these two institutions alone, we are already putting an infrastructure of about 20 billion in two institutions. Now, the CPN also has this virtually in every geopolitical zone of the country in several universities. That's just CPM. Now, you have not talked about the third fund, the tertiary education trust fund, which has traditionally the responsibility to put up structures in every university, including colleges of education and polytechnics run by state governments. Now, the multipurpose all we are going to see is the ETF, uh, the third fund, uh, structure. This is just one of many. Now, when we went to University of Benin, remember, we counted more than 37 projects completed by Ted Fund in the last three years in that university alone. At Alchi Polytechnic, more than 20, you know, projects. So, now, if you look at this, for example, between the universities, we are talking about 20 billion, two projects. You have not counted the totality of what is coming in from federal annual budget from third fund then from a, a, a petroleum technology a development uh, fund plus uh, plus NDDC building hostels in many of the universities across the nine uh, oil producing states you know and then there is also the universal service provision fund that is also investing mainly on the creation uh, of learning platforms electronic learning platforms e-learning which has been going on in 12 universities and we're taking them in batches. So the reality is it will take time for people to see the total in terms of the fiscal structures of what we're investing. And all this in two, three years. In two, three years. And look at the other structures we have, we have just bypassed are here at NDA. And this is the case. If you go to APU, you're going to see the same thing. You know, in several, Kaduna Poly will go, you will see projects that are going on. So we we want to we want to make it very clear that in terms of physical investment, investment in physical structures, we are sinking hundreds of billions of naira into Nigerian universities in the last three, three years alone, and the, the the funding is increasing. So the idea that we will lock up our universities over a strike, you know, absolutely is out of the question. I believe that this track has other reasons other than infrastructure. And then we have already put forward 200 billion in addition to what is going on now on ground to be invested in our university education. And this, we are just talking of universities. We are not talking of polytechnics. You remember we transformed the workshops, you know, in all in about um, 51 polytechnics across the country. We have done that in the last two years, and we spent over 15 billion to change the workshops, you know, the learning facilities and laboratories across 51 polytechnics, state on, federal on, you know, across the country. Now, we went to uh, the teaching hospitals you saw in Joss, you saw in Benin, you know, the new facilities that have been introduced across board. We also saw the new uh, teaching hospital at um, uh, Eboi. You know, at Abakaleki, you saw the structure that are coming up there. So we are doing a lot, far more than, you know, um, anyone has done in recent years. But two, three years is not sufficient for those things to be completed and utilized. But the investment is very, very huge. So I want to still, again, use this opportunity to appeal to members of the academic staff you know, of universities. Maybe they should send some of their colleagues to come out and also see the kind of things that are going on, you know, around. Is this investment sufficient? No. I believe we can do more and we will continue to invest more. Because the rot of the last 30 years has accumulated. And we cannot 
change that situation in three years. Maybe the next two, three administrations, if they invest at the level we're investing now, I believe the story will be different in the next 10 years in our own universities and higher institutions. So we need patience. If we believe that the only way we can solve problem is to lock up the system and go home until every problem is solved, then the country will shut down. And I believe we need a lot of patience. ASU has a good cause, but this track is... Patches. They will be formed up within each of the cubicles. The cubicle has the capacity for 30 to 40 cadets. So an instructor will be with them. They will strip rifles. They will learn how to couple rifles, clean them, and, and put them back together. The electronic uh, shooting range is uh, an indoor uh, facility as opposed to what uh, hitherto we are used to, the outdoor shooting. This uh, is, is uh, against the normal conventional shooting exercise. They are going to use electronic guns and electronic targets. So this, this will take them away from the ozos and buzzles of the outside uh, you know, uh, environment. Uh, it is the modern ways of uh, learning marksmanship and it is uh, uh, in line with uh, international uh, best practices. Ceremony. This was what we used, and this was actually this place was shrubs, and the convocation was in September. This is only December. So, yes, sir. It was assisted by the TED Fund. Purpose is we have reasons where we do doba, where we have VIPs who want to address personnel, officers, and cadets. We need a hall big enough to house everybody. This project started in December, and by June it was ready. The CDS addressed cadets and officers in this hall by June. The Honorable Minister was here for our convocation in September. It was done. Indeed, you may be surprised when we told the, His Excellency, the Governor of uh, Kaduna State, that this project was completed in six months. He, he didn't believe it. He, was, he thought it was a magic. I told him we have one that was completed in three months the drill shed which we will see on our way out. The capacity here is about 2,000 seater. If need be, it can be expanded. You may want to come in and take a look. Uh, simulators and things like I said, it will save a lot of costs and even collateral damages and casualties. Uh, would you put a figure to how much you have saved in putting this one down? That is one. Secondly, uh, I want us to have this on our mind that the Army Engineer Corps could be useful if they can train our new copper engineers who can also do some of this job at less cost, direct level. That way, we will not have problem of looking for experience on the, I mean, on the engineers from our own graduate. It's a test fund project. Money was given to the NDA, and because they don't just throw money at you, it was supervised properly. And we had an officer who is the text officer to test fund who supervised the project. I wouldn't be able to tell you so much figure was saved, but I can tell you authoritatively that if this project was handled by a contractor, it would have cost us all, over twice the amount we used in, in, in completing it. Thank you. Well, I think this is our last stop. Um, like I said, we did the last uh, uh, convocation, not the commission uh, of the officers here. The president did it in this hall. Um, we are again impressed by what we have seen uh, in the NDA. But I want fellow reporters to specifically take note of the huge investments that have come about in one institution. We're not talking about you know that we're still going to see uh, Kaduna State uh, University, Polytechnic, ABU. Uh, the projects we saw here today are run into tens of billions uh, cumulatively when you put them together. So we are happy. Uh, the 
standards achieved. Very good finishing, and uh, I believe that the NDA will continue to maintain this infrastructure for the continued development of this uh, Premier Academy. Uh, thank you. We'll be moving. Thank you. Thank you very.